this is the first of what will be a two-part series on the building of this little engine. Back in January 2023, Angela, my wife, bought me a set of castings for my birthday. Um, because of my delays in completing the uh, paddle steamer engine, I've only just got around to opening the box. And there it is, the box lid is removed. The castings are for an oil filled pump, otherwise known to me in Lincolnshire as a nodding donkey. Everything is very well packed. All the bits are encapsulated and what I assume is sort of vacuum, uh, vacuum packed foil or something or other. Um, it doesn't look to be a very complicated engine to my eye so hopefully this isn't going to take too long to do, although we're in no rush of course. So uh, as, as is normal with uh, this supplier the castings look to be absolutely excellent, uh, very good and all the materials that I'm likely to need are here, although in fairness I shall be raiding my scrap bin and using uh, a lot of my old, uh, my own stock rather than uh, some of this stuff. The general arrangement drawing looks very straightforward to my eye at least and at this juncture I don't anticipate any real difficulty in machining uh, this engine to completion. The instruction sheet consists of a number of numbered instructions for the various uh, machining operations on the various parts. I've dealt with this sort of thing bef before, but I do have to say sometimes I uh, struggle a bit with this approach. I'm afraid, being ever so old, I come from an age where instructions used to be written down in some detail and you don't seem to get that anymore. But um, I think it'll be alright. There are a few very basic assembly instructions, so I suppose I'll have a read of those, but I really don't think I'm going to need them. The first thing to do with a project like this, well in my view anyway, is to decide which castings and things you're going to machine up first. Uh, carefully remove them from the packaging, be sure not to lose anything, and uh, clean up the uh, flashing and whatnot that inevitably occurs, and just clean all those things up in order to begin the process of um, holding everything in the lathe or the mill or whatever you're going to do uh, for the final machining. But I have to say the castings on the whole to me look, uh, look pretty good. There isn't a great deal of excess uh, material to remove. On the subject of uh, cleaning up flashing from castings and things, I find two of the most uh, useful bits of gear in the workshop are in fact the, um, the belt sanders. I've got a narrow one and I've got a wider one and uh, I've never been much good with a file. And I find uh, these things absolutely a boon 
and making a start on things that are not flashing or aren't quite square or whatnot. Obviously, ultimately, you uh, probably need to uh, have a bit of a touch up with files, but I um, try to minimise that because I ain't no good at it. I've um, cleaned up the majority of the bigger castings, that's to say removed the flashings from the moulds so that hopefully when I get to it they'll be in a position that they can be held in a chuck or whatever's necessary mini machine vice to do the uh, to do the machining typical Ed White dodgy setup to machine the uh, feet of the uh, I don't know what this bit's called diagonal stand on this uh, nodding donkey pumping engine A few snaps showing some of the machining operations uh, associated with sorting out the front support legs. Bit tricky, counterboring the bottom of the uh, bed plate casting for the bracing rod which is actually at an angle on the top The hardest part of any machining operation is usually the setting up and in this case I've got three fairly long holes so one, two, three to drill through the bearing blocks of this uh, pumping engine there are three quarter of an inch centers and they do need to be fairly right because they're actually allow for two gears to mesh so you can't afford to get it too far wrong my plan therefore in this case I've mounted the cast iron bed plate onto an angle plate fixed on the table of the milling machine I have marked out as good as I can where I think the centre of the first uh, hole for the bearings needs to be which is here, that point is not over it at the moment and then the plan is to um, use the uh, cross light um, indicator to move along two lots of three quarters of an inch and uh, in so doing hopefully put these bearing holes where they're supposed to be will it work? well as usual I've got no idea so I started off with a centre drill on the first one fairly reasonable started to spot with the centre drill small centre drill on that one and yeah you guessed it the centre drill has immediately broken and left uh, the point stuck in the work so my plan for extracting that is to use a uh, sort of hollow end mill drill around it in the fondo that I can then knock the broken part out. If I try and drill into that the uh, or, or whatever machine, it's just going to wander everywhere. I did say was it a good plan didn't I? Right, I've used a hollow pointed end mill and then managed to chip around and I think I've managed to uh, knock out the broken point 
So I'll just chew the hole up a bit again with the, uh, the hollow pointed end mill before starting again. So this time round, and on the basis it might be slightly harder to break the point off, I've used a bigger centre drill. Uh, and it seems to have worked on this one. Try not to break the bloody point again. I used a 1964th drill to get started, which is to say just a touch under the uh, 5 sixteenths that I'm shooting for. I've now put a 5 sixteenths end mill in the chuck to just true up and open the first hole at which point I'll use a 5 sixteenths drill through that to finish off um, the hole in the other uh, bearing. Strictly speaking these don't have to be reamed holes because at the end of the day they're just going to hold a brass bearing but um, in the event I decided to not to finish off with a 5 sixteenths drill but to uh, run a 5 sixteenths reamer through. Notice also that in the event I had to uh, improve the rear support to this bed plate casting because under the force of the drilling and whatnot, it had a slight tendency to rotate. So uh, I've added some support to the other end. So has it worked with the required accuracy? Well, I suppose time will tell when I fit the bearings and the shafts and the gears to see if they mesh correctly. Who knows? So measuring with my uh, my chromatic saw gauge, there might be about a three thou discrepancy in parallel from one side to the other, and if that's true, then these shafts are parallel within three thou, and I'll take that because that's more than good enough for what I'm doing. I believe time will tell. I've got the gearing sorted out on this uh, oil filled pump, whatever it is, nodding donkey. Not quite finished, some of the bits are right, but anyway, typical me, I get so far and then move on to something else. So I think the next thing I'll do is machine up these. Uh, Two cast iron control arms, one each side. Cutting the tapers on these rods with my uh, homemade power stock set over device I made years ago. First one in and then turn it round and do the other. Gently does it. I think these are called support arms. I'm not quite sure at this stage what they support on this uh, pumping engine, but anyway. So uh, I've cut them a bit barrel shaped as the uh, drawing shows. They won't win any prizes at an exhibition, but they're good enough for me. To conclude this first part, uh, a few snaps showing various bits and pieces prior to uh, completing the actual engine and also prior to uh, creating a diorama which will consist of the Nodding Donkey engine, 
driven by uh, a Wilkinson steam plant that I bought a long, long time ago.